welcome to Dreams Traveled. I'm Kalia and I traveled to 15 different countries in the year that I lived in Europe. And in this video, I'm gonna show you my experience in Budapest. Budapest is one of the most livable cities that I saw on my two month um, travel journey. Um, because there's Buda and there's Pest, and the Charles Bridge connects both of these kind of cities. Buda is very calm and so peaceful, while Pest is like where you go at night, there's a lot of partying, there's a lot of people, it's very a very loud city. So you, I could definitely see, like myself living there, honestly, living in Buda and then going to Pest at night, you know, whenever I feel like it. So in my previous video, I was in Bratislava, Slovakia. I took about like a three hour, four hour bus to Budapest, Hungary. Stay to the end to hear about all the funny things that happened to me while I was there. And I hope you enjoy the video and learn something about Budapest. Here's the beautiful outside of St. Stephen's Basilica. And this is the dome that collapsed uh, in 1868, but they redid it in 1905. I'll give you a moment of silence to appreciate this basilica. Planning for the basilica started in 1845. St. Stephen's is named after the first king and this happens to be the third largest church in Hungary, but it really felt like the first largest church because it was so humongous. I walked around for an hour and a half in awe with my jaw on the floor. Fisherman's Bastion was made during the Millennial Exhibition, which was a world's fair that was going to be held in Budapest. It celebrated the 1000 year anniversary of Hungary and many buildings were created and restored. There are seven towers representing the seven Hungarian chiefs who found Hungary in 895. There's also panoramic views of Pest and the Danube River. So why is it called Fisherman's Bastion? Well, there used to be fishermen who lived in between the castle walls and the Danube River. And right next to the Fisherman's Bastion, we can see Matthias Church. Matthias Church is named after King Matthias, who ruled from 1458 to 1490. They began building this church in 1255. It's a medieval Gothic church, and it was restored in 1896. Not one square inch of this church was left blank. They filled in the space in an immaculate way with gold and painting and so much beauty. Iron chain links and pillars make up what is Chain Bridge, one of the most important bridges in Budapest because it's what connected Buda and Pest. It was completed in 1849. In 1945, the Chain Bridge was very badly destroyed from bombing and they had to rebuild it, and that was completed in 1949 for the 100th year anniversary of its inauguration. I absolutely loved the Buddha side so much, I wanted to move in right away. I mean, look at how cute the street is. Budapest Castle was completed in 1265. In 1526, the Ottoman Empire overtook Buddha Castle. Now, do you remember the Habsburgs who ruled Vienna for 650 years? Well, they also tried to overtake the Buddha Castle, but failed. Buddha Castle is on a hill because it was a military place, and they expanded it into a palace in 1769. The Hungarian Parliament building has to be one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever seen in my life. It was completed in 1904, and the first king of Hungary's crown resides here and has been for over a thousand years. This is the third largest building in Hungary with 691 rooms and 29 staircases. 
It overlooks the Danube River, and how ironic that the architect of the building went blind before its completion. 60 iron shoes in a 1940s style line the Danube River to commemorate the 20,000 Jews that lost their lives when Hitler overtook the Hungarian government. The Nazis would have the Jews stand on the edge of the river, tell them to turn around, take off their shoes, and they would be shot in the back of the head and fall into the water. What I admire so much about Europe is that no matter how gruesome the history is, they still showcase it. As painful as the monuments are, the past has made the city what it is today, and I think that other countries and even we as people can learn from that. Hero Square was also part of the Millennial Exhibition. It was designed in 1896, and there are 14 statues of men who have impacted the history of Hungary, including St. Stephen, the Seven Hungarian Chiefs, King Matthias, and many others. This castle was completed in 1905 to showcase the history of the Magars, who were native to Hungary before it was founded in 895. The Seychene thermal baths were completed in 1913 and they were the first baths on the Pest side. In the 1880s, engineers dug 0.6 miles underground to reveal the 170 degree Fahrenheit hot springs that are rich in minerals and contain great pressure. This created the Shecheni Baths. This cafe is 120 years old and was the home for very famous Hungarian artists, writers, and poets. This is said to be the world's most beautiful cafe and I would have to agree. And also add on that it's the world's most expensive cafe because this cost me 37 euros. A lot of life lessons happened in Budapest for some reason. Um, and this one, this one happened to be in a taxi cab. The metro system was very confusing. I was trying to get to the parliament building. I was very frustrated. It was hot. Um, and a taxi cab pulled up and I said, thank you universe, I need that. So I hopped in. Um, we just start talking. I'm a young solo female traveler. So I was very naive then. And he asks me then, like if it was five years ago, <laughs> it was literally this year. And he asked me, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from America. He's like, oh my God, that's so cool. Just talking to me, talking to me, whatever. Then I were there and I'm leaving and I'm like, I know you take card, right? He's like, no, I don't take card, I only take cash. I only carried emergency cash on me, so I wanted to use my card for everything. And this taxi ride was 17 euros for an eight minute drive. It did not make sense. He was basically jipping me because he knew I was American. And I was so frustrated because I was like, Wow, you know, even being vulnerable with someone and, and just talking to them and telling them where you are, like they'll abuse you and they'll use you. And and he just jipped me because he could he had a credit card machine, but he said that it didn't work. I was like, BS. Uh-oh. <laughs> this next story is just the many parts of me vomiting throughout in Europe. So this was a very busy day. This is the 29th of July and I was walking around a lot, hadn't eaten much, and I went to the thermal baths. The thermal baths here, I forgot the name. Uh, so I was there from about one to five. Now, as anyone knows, you're not supposed to be in a jacuzzi in a thermal bath for a very long time. I was in there for four hours with very little food. So I felt fine, whatever. I got back to my hostel. I made myself some pasta and broccoli or whatever. And I felt totally fine. Okay, then I went with some people to a bar later that night, talking to people and I get this heat on the back of my neck, like this overcoming heat. Like if someone just lit a fire right behind me. This girl is on fire. And I felt so ill and um and i told them i gotta go back to the hostel i'm feeling really bad and they were like okay and mind you i had no drink i did not drink at all at this bar i go to my hostel and all i want to do is lie down i feel so sick so i immediately go to sleep and i i wake up in the middle of the night and i feel the urge to vomit so i get up 
uh, mind you, so I'm in this, this hostel dorm, right? There's two other girls that I've never seen. I've never spoken to. I hear them in the middle of the night in the dark, you know, rummaging through the things and getting into bed. I never saw them. Okay. This is the second night that we all like were sleeping in the same room. The three of us, two girls, they didn't know and me. So I get up, I go to the bathroom and I vomit my life away. It was so painful. I closed my eyes the entire time. When I open my eyes, skip to this timestamp if you don't like detail of vomiting, okay? Warning. Um, and I opened my eyes and my vomit was all over this bathroom and it was all my pasta. It was all red pasta all over this hostel bathroom. I didn't even make it in the toilet. It was all over the, the on top of the toilet, on the floor, on the walls. It was like I exploded pasta. So I pull myself together. I clean everything with some toilet paper. This bathroom has no soap, has literally nothing in it. Just toilet paper and that's it. I left the bathroom and the two girls that I've never seen, never spoken to literally were like, are you okay? Do you need any help? What can we do for you? Are you okay? And I was like, I'm fine. <laughs> But in my head, I'm like, oh my God, you guys are so sweet. I don't even know you. You care about me. So I'm not really sure if it was heat exhaustion, if it was the pasta or what it really was, but it was not a cute moment. For my third and final story, I went to get some food to eat, poured a little salt on it and the whole salt shaker fell into my food. For months and months and months, I knew in my soul that I was going to do this trip. I was going to go to Berlin, Germany, Prague, Czech Republic, Vienna, Austria, Bratislava, Slovakia, and Budapest, Hungary, right? But what's next? Guys, do you understand that I went to five different countries by myself in 18 days? Can I get a round of applause? So Budapest really just went to show for me like, no one's gonna take care of you but yourself in the taxi when you get sick, because I was literally all alone. I had no one. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video when I go to Edinburgh. So give this video a like, click the subscription button below, and read the description box, okay? Bye.